Hello there, it's Saturday the 2nd of May 2020 and here you are with Dan in Essex UK. So the main purpose of my channel is to show people how to grow their own fruit and vegetables no matter what size garden, allotment or growing space they do indeed have. So more and more people are getting into gardening which I think is a great thing and today I'm going to be covering soft fruit. So when one gets into gardening it can be quite daunting and overwhelming, you know, where to start and I think soft fruit can be very very appealing due to the lovely taste of it and uh, particularly appealing to children if you want to get them into gardening or indeed they want to get into gardening themselves. So what I'm going to do is talk a bit about soft fruit, take you around a few plants, vines etc. I've got here with a little bit of information about each one and then you can come to your own conclusion if you think soft fruit is worth growing. And there we go. Right, we are going to start with strawberries. So I've got a variety of strawberries, okay? And these here are Cambridge favourite, a very traditional variety. Many people have heard of these or indeed tasted them. Absolutely delicious. So you can see here that they put out some lovely flowers, lovely blossoms. So they are self-fertile, okay? And they do benefit from feeding. So good organic feed at the start of the year is brilliant and then maybe once every three weeks or so give them a balanced liquid feed and that should get you going with them very well for a good crop so lots of things to that are really good about strawberries one thing is that you can propagate them yourself from runners that come in the autumn time so if you think from three plants like this you could get two three maybe even four runners from each plant in the autumn so three plants you could turn into nine or something like that maybe even 12 so isn't that brilliant see that bee over there look fertilizing that lovely blueberry so now's a good time to talk about blueberries look at that look now blueberries are a great plant to grow i have about five varieties of blueberry here all ripening at different times of the season so blueberries are absolutely lovely and they need an ericaceous growing medium okay and that is a ph of four and a half to about five and a half otherwise known as acidic okay if you don't have that in your garden you can grow them in containers like I have here and really really worth growing really really tasty they're lovely in pies you can make jam out of them you can eat them yourself you know just dessert ones you know at the table absolutely beautiful so next we're going to move on to raspberries and raspberries are just amazing to grow because they don't take up much space you get such a great crop off of them they readily propagate themselves as you can see by the new canes coming up so these are variety golden queen which is an absolutely lovely beautifully sweet yellow raspberry okay and I've had these in the ground here for oh, probably this will be their second year I would say and I had one two maybe three canes and you can now see how many I've got here and with raspberries you generally have two types summer fruiting and autumn fruiting okay and summer fruiting ones they fruit on the previous year's growth and autumn fruiting ones fruit on the growth that the plant has put out this year. So you can see here, this would have been last year's growth and that is what the fruit is coming on. And this here, no, this was from the year before, so I need to prune that out. So really, really good. Do your research into raspberries because I would recommend anyone who is really into growing fruit in the backyard or at the allotment raspberries are definitely one for the list right now grapes so grapes truly are brilliant okay now i've got a playlist on grapes okay and um, if you're interested you can always check that one out at previous projects i had different vines and i had a vine that probably produced in excess of 200 bunches of grapes per year okay now this is variety lake mont seedless okay and you can just see the amount of fruit that this has set so grape vines what they do is they set the fruit off of canes that grow like here you see off of the previous year's growth so all of this would have grown last year okay and then these canes have come on to here this year and you can see the fruit there so they're at the stage now kind of between flowers and small little bunches of grapes okay so they're really really worth growing are 
grapes, so many different varieties. You can get wine grapes, you can get eating grapes, a combination of the two. Grapes that can be used for eating and also making wine and just so many things. And um, look at this lovely crop that this has set here. I mean, I'm gonna be getting so many grape, vine, uh, grape bunches all being well. Okay, so many of you are aware of my grapes that I'm growing here in the polytunnel. This is variety Autumn Royal and absolutely loaded once again with small bunches of little grapes there. So I'm expecting a beautiful crop of these lovely Californian grapes here in Essex, UK. So doesn't that sound fantastic? More and more here. So grapes definitely one for the list if they do indeed float your boat. Now we're going to go into gooseberries. So gooseberries, once again, a first class fruit to grow. You can see I've got them covered here with net curtains because the birds, particularly pigeons, absolutely love to remove the fruits from the bushes and then you'll get no crops. So there you go. So many different varieties of gooseberry you can get. You can get red ones, you can get green ones. You can use these for eating fresh, pies, you can make wine, you can make jam, so many things. Small bushes, you can keep them small, you can let them get big. Um, just an absolutely great, versatile and straightforward crop for you to grow in the backyard, at the allotment or wherever you want to. Okay, so here we have tayberries, okay? And tayberries are a great thing to grow because they tend to be one of the first soft fruits ready. So you get these before the strawberries, you get these before the raspberries. They, when they go a lovely deep purple, they are incredibly sweet and really, really tasty. So just an absolutely lovely thing to grow and when they first come, they're, they're tangy, you know. If you leave them sort of pale in colour, they're still very tasty if you've got sort of a, a, a tooth or a tongue or whatever that likes something a little bit tangy. But as I stated before, if you let them get really deep purple, they're really, really lovely and sweet. And once again, you know, you can do so many things with tayberries. You know, you, you can eat them fresh, make them make wine. You can put them in a pie or something like that. You know, you can put them in a smoothie. Just so many different options and they fruit on the previous year's growth okay so basically all these little flowers you see coming here they're coming off of like little spurs if you will or canes if you want to call them that that come off of the previous year's growth so the way that you deal with these okay is when this growth here from last year finishes when the crop is finished this year you will then remove that and leave the new growth from this year for next year and that's what you will get your fruit on so i'll just uh, show you down here look that's a little bit of new growth okay just down there so that'll be if i leave it in that'll be a you'll get much bigger obviously that'll be a little plant that should be producing me fruit next year so these compound okay the longer you've got the plant in your possession the more and more and more it'll establish and the more fruit you will get Okay, so we'll go on to, and talk about some other fruits, okay? Now, pears, okay, look at this, absolutely lovely variety. Concord, just a lovely, lovely fruit to grow in the backyard. This tree has set a huge crop by the looks of it. How much of it will get through, who knows? But um, pears are definitely one for you to consider. And there's another pear tree here, variety onward. You can see one of my other Tabry specimens here up against a south east facing wall so once again this should be setting an absolutely lovely crop for this year so gorgeous stuff apple tree variety worcester pearman look at that expecting a good crop off of this as well and of course cherries so you can see here the cherry tree just about it's uh, this is variety stella Okay, look at that. Isn't that just lovely? So this has set a lovely crop under here and I'm protecting it because I don't want the birds to get it. So they're going to sit on the tree until sort of late summer. So they've got to be protected to ensure I get a good crop. So we'll go on to red currants and black currants. Now there's a few here. Now I was a bit, to, um, what's the term, slow off the mark here. I didn't get it covered up enough and a little sparrow was a uh, happily helping himself or herself to 
to some of the currents on here, but there we go, never mind. So red, red currents, black currents, white currents are brilliant. Now, red currents were used during World War II as a citrus substitute because, of course, you know, citrus wasn't getting through as readily as it could have. Okay, people, so there's a little bit about uh, soft fruit. You can see there's quite a bit coming on now. I've built this collection up over a period of years, okay? It didn't happen overnight. So for those of you who are getting into gardening or starting to expand on your collection, one step at a time, you know, just slowly, slowly add to it. Don't get overwhelmed. Build on your success, and I'm sure that uh, you will get there. So there we go. If you like my work, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Any comments, questions, or whatevers, please feel free to post below. Have a good weekend. See you next time.